Hydrology is an amazing subject and very diverse subject. In this video, we're looking at, in more detail, groundwater. So what is groundwater? How does water get to become groundwater? Different types of formations and processes that are involved with groundwater and all the terms. And again, looking through a step-by-step -step process of how groundwater forms. This is the Earth Science Classroom. So if we're discussing groundwater, we first have to kind of set the scene in where this happens and occurs on the Earth. And in the subsurface layers, the Earth's interior, the crust and lithosphere, the Earth's interior, and looking at the precipitation in different forms, mostly in rain or meteoric rain, but also in various other forms based on temperature and various levels of melting and freezing. But the groundwater is going to reside and occur in this area of the Earth. So the first stage we're looking at obviously precip and the process of rain from the atmosphere fall into the earth through gravity and impacting the earth's surface. Now there are terms here that we have to discuss. So interception, which is any kind of vegetation or part of the biosphere, ecosystem is going to intercept and stop the water as it's hitting the ground or before it hits the ground like a tree or a leaf and take in the water from this point so the water will not reach any groundwater because it's been intercepted by vegetation then we have the overland flow and surface runoff this is where the water is not going to enter the soil and the bedrock but it's going to flow over the earth's surface via contours and elevation and gradients and slope down to the lowest point where there usually is going to be some sort of collection of water, puddle, lake or river system or stream system. Then we also have the loss of water from the Earth's surface in terms of evapotranspiration, which is the combination of evaporation and transpiration. Evaporation is the loss of water back into water vapor through addition of thermal energy and heat from solar radiation from the surface up into the atmosphere from the ground and surfaces on the on the earth surface and transpiration is the loss of water from vegetation mostly leaves and the evaporation of water of leaves then we have infiltrations this is the part we're looking at for groundwater is the infiltration now how water is going to infiltrate the soil based on soil type the compaction based on the amount of water, the rain, and also the amount of prior moisture level in the soil. It's going to dictate how much water is going to move through the soil to deeper layers through gravity. And then we have interflow. Interflow is the process of moving water through the soil and not going into bedrock and not being on the surface runoff, but just going through the soil itself through the gradients and flowing downhill in the soil. Then we have what's called percolation. Percolation is the action or process of water moving down through the layers of the soil and layers of the bedrock. Now, bedrock is a general term for the solid consolidated rock that is underneath the soil, which the soil originally comes from through weather and erosion. So the bedrock could be any rock, igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic, but in more common cases the majority of the earth's surface above sea level is going to have majority of sedimentary rock with a sprinkling of both igneous and metamorphic on the continents but mostly sedimentary now part two is going to flow on from percolation whereby the water is flowing through the soil through the different rock layers the bedrock and in this case the bedrock in this location is going to be a certain thickness of porous rock. Now porous means that there are spaces and voids and cavities that are in between the rock particles or rock layers out bedding or strata and are able to fill up with water as the water is going to flow down with gravity. Now the level of porous rock can range based on the rock type and if it's going to be fractured or consolidated or unconsolidated but most rocks have a porosity or a permeability around 20 percent 
some rocks up to 70, like limestone. So limestone in a cast environment is a very porous rock and has the ability to hold and transfer and transmit a lot of water towards the surface down to a lower depth. Now it gets to a point where this black area at the bottom of the diagram is showing a non-porous layer of rock, which is impermeable, which means that it might have the ability to take in water through some porosity, but it's not going to be able to transmit because these holes or cavities or voids are not connected, and therefore any water does get in cannot be transmitted and flow through. So this would be a barrier, so to speak, of any kind of water that wants to flow down deeper into the Earth's interior, or in this case, the crust. So the porous rock above is going to hold a certain amount of water, and this is what we call groundwater. Now this is step three. Step three is looking at the saturated zone and the unsaturated zone or area. Now this is relating to the amount of water in the porous rock. Now as the groundwater starts to fill up and accumulate because the consistent rainfall, perhaps of the climate in this area and the consistent infiltration and percolation of water from the surface down into the porous rock underneath the soil. Now this water is going to accumulate if it's not going to flow out or be removed by wells or any kind of discharge it's going to accumulate over time now this accumulation is where we have all the spaces in the rock are filled with water which is called saturation now the top level or layer of that saturated zone which divides the area that's full of water versus the area that is not full of water that is below 100%, which is called the unsaturated zone, is called the water table. Now, this water table is showing you how much water is in the porous rock underneath the ground. And we can access this through wells and sensors. And we can see if the water table is going to rise and go towards the surface or fall and get deeper in the ground, which is going to dictate the amount of water in the rock and also dictate the climate and any future issues in terms of removing that water if it's low or high, in terms of flooding perhaps. Now step four, we're looking at the recharge zone and the discharge zone. So the recharge zone is the area on the Earth's surface, the landscape, the terrain, the relief, where the precip occurs, the rainfall is going to occur, or we can have different kinds of water. And it's going to fall on this part of the land, and it's where that water is going to seek through, infiltrate, percolate down into the groundwater, into the saturated zone, and sit below the water table. Now, the unsaturated zone can have a, an amount of water that is held in the rock based on the porosity, but it is not completely full of water, so therefore it cannot be saturated, therefore we call it unsaturated, or we also call it the Vados zone, V-A-D-O-S-E, Vados zone. Now, this recharge zone could be the entire landscape or could be limited to a small area based on what's on the surface. Perhaps the surface has a different rock type or soil compaction level or soil type. Or maybe the climate is different or maybe there's a rain shadow over a mountain, but it all depends on the landscape and the climate. The recharge zone is where you're going to add water to this zone of saturation, which we call the groundwater. The application of this groundwater and understanding groundwater is the fact that we can judge and look at and focus on the water table as a fluctuating level which will run parallel to the Earth's surface underground at a certain depth. Now this depth can fluctuate based on the season, based on latitude, based on climate patterns, rainfall, recharge zone and also the porosity of the rock. Now this obviously shows two different water tables, a drier climate with the lower water table deeper in the ground and a higher water table which would signify a higher precip, a higher amount of water that's going to enter the groundwater through percolation, infiltration and maybe dictate also the amount of confining units and layers of rock which are non-porous for example, an igneous or metamorphic, which is unfractured and consolidated. So that would give a more of a barrier, which we might also push up the water table and create what's called a perched water table, which is a higher than regular over a confined layer or confining bed of rock, which is going to push that small section of water table higher than the average water table. 
And as you see, the water tables at the very top right is going to merge with the river or stream system, which is going to be the surface layer of the water table. On the surface, the river is showing you where the water table is, and any higher elevation land around it will have a flow of groundwater and overland flow down the gradient down towards the river. So this stage, we're looking at an aquifer. Now, an aquifer is defined as groundwater that can be accessed through the surface by humans and used for human activity or drinking water, irrigation, agriculture, crops, you name it. So we can take out this water, which is generally potable or at least somewhat clean through the minerals and rock layers, and we could use it on the surface. And this is usually a large amount of water. So groundwater is generally just the water held in voids and spaces in porous rock. Aquifers are large scale groundwater volume of water, which we can access. Now, a confined aquifer in the rock is sandwiched between two layers of confining beds or layers which are called aquitards, which don't let any water pass through them. So this confined aquifer will be under pressure and it would be in between these two layers. If you have an unconfined aquifer, this would be above the brown aquitard layer on this diagram, whereby it is not sandwiched between two layers, but has one layer beneath it, which won't transmit water with non-porous characteristics and it would be open to the unsaturated zone or the verdose zone and be able to have new water added through the recharge zone on the surface. The confined aquifer would only have a, a section of its area under a recharge zone and not all of it. So it would recharge from a certain area, but then it would flow and be confined between two layers that are aquitards. So as you can see on the diagram where we have the confined aquifer that's sandwiched between two layers of confined beds which are non-porous and aquitards and you have that unconfined aquifer above this here you see where that confined aquifer is being recharged with new water transferring percolating infiltrating from a small section of the earth's surface where it's going to rain and flow down into this aquifer and flow down to the right as groundwater flow through that porous rock and then become this confined aquifer under pressure later on on its way down towards the ocean don't forget groundwater is going to flow in the same manner as surface water where it wants to flow downhill with a gradient with gravity down to the lowest point and eventually hit an ocean elevation so as an overview groundwater originates from meteoric water which is precip from the atmosphere that is going to fall on the earth's surface and the portion or percentage of water that infiltrates and percolates through the surface through the soil into the bedrock and accumulates in porous rock layers into the voids and spaces and cavities and fills up with water thus creating groundwater which is called the saturated zone which is full of water and anything above this zone which is the water table which will be an unsaturated zone up to the surface or a verdose zone or in this case it could be a various layering of confining beds which are going to be called aquitards which are going to be non-porous and not allow water to transmit or transfer through this layer of rock and a large amount of groundwater is called an aquifer if we use this water on the surface by removing it through wells thank you so much for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it if you like it please subscribe and hit the like button if you like more on this content please check out my channel which has all these videos on earth science